my name is Bridget. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be something that I didn't think that I would have to talk about and something that I've been dreading talking about. And that is, I have worms in my aquarium. Yes, you heard me right. I have worms in my aquarium. And I'm going to talk about that because I know that a lot of people actually deal with worms in their aquarium and there are a lot of people who don't talk about it. It's hard to figure out what's going on. It's hard to know if you're alone. It's hard to know how to fix the problem. So I'm going to let you guys know what I've been going through and hopefully that can help some of you in your situation. So to start off and give a little backstory, you guys know that I have two aquariums. I have one aquarium for my betta fish, Cozy, and then I have my other aquarium for my three mystery snails. And when I did the unboxing of the baby mystery snails, I actually had no idea that there was anything on my glass until I went to edit that footage and I saw a lot of little tiny specks all over the glass of my aquarium and I don't know if some of you guys picked up on that maybe you didn't I'm not sure but it definitely opened my eyes to something that's going on in my tank and instead of just thinking that it was algae I decided to take a closer look and I grabbed my macro lens and pushed that sucker right up against the glass and I saw this Mm-hmm. Did you see what I'm talking about? There are tiny microscopic little white tubular worms all in my aquarium. Of course, that's something that's going to startle, I think, anyone. And I started Googling, trying to figure out what's going on. What are these little worms in my tank? What did I do? At first, I thought, you know, maybe it came from something snail related, but like I said, I noticed in the footage that they were already there and I had no idea. So I knew that it did not come from the baby snails. So when I started to look on Google and figure out exactly what's going on in my tank, I found out that there are quite a few different worms that end up in aquariums. And you know, you're setting up aquariums, so you think this is gonna be a fun little hobby. No one talks about anything bad going on. It's just fish, it's just snails, it's fun, it's perfect, nothing goes wrong. That's a lie. There are actually several things that can go wrong in aquariums, and I didn't think this would happen to me, but it sure did. So as I said, there are quite a few different worms that end up in aquariums, and two of the most common worms that end up in freshwater aquariums are called planaria and detritus. Now there aren't a whole lot of differences between the two, but what I can tell you is that the planaria seem to be bigger, and you can see them more easily with the naked eye, as well as their triangular shaped head and their two black eyes. Looking at the worms that I have in my aquarium, I did not notice a distinct head shape. They are very tiny, so they're very hard to see, and Obviously, if I can't see the shape of their head, I don't see any eyes as well. So that is why I believe that what I have in my aquarium are called detritus worms. Detritus worms are much smaller, they are more tubular, whereas planaria are more flat worms. They are very hard to see, and usually you pretty much never see them. Now, I'm not an expert, so I don't know with 100% certainty that I have detritus worms in my aquarium. It just seems to make the most sense. So when you're dealing with these types of worms, one thing to remember is that worms in an aquarium are extremely common so I immediately thought that I was doing something wrong I'm disgusting my tanks are filthy what have I done it's nothing that you did wrong it's nothing that makes you disgusting you know I'll talk about all the reasons why they show up in a minute but just know if you find worms in your aquarium Number one, you're not alone. Number two, it's completely normal. So when treating these kinds of worms with planaria, planaria tends to be more of a parasitic type of worm, and that usually has to be treated with some sort of dewormer, which can often cause a complete wipeout of your aquarium, and that's including the fish or the snails or shrimp or anything that you have in there with it. When you are dealing with detritus worms, basically they multiply super fast, but they also can diminish super fast. And it's just from changing up what you do a little bit and making sure to try and eradicate them as best as you can. And eventually with some of the changes that I'll talk about in a second, 
they will just take care of themselves. So now let's talk about what the detritus worm actually is. So detritus is a term that means any kind of waste or debris. So when you think about a detritus worm, obviously with detritus meaning waste, it's basically saying they're a waste worm. And that means that they feed on waste and debris and grossness. So naturally you're gonna think, okay, you have detritus worms in your aquarium. That means your aquarium is nasty. Yes and no. As I said before, these worms are completely natural and normal. You're never gonna have an aquarium that's completely free of any kind of, I don't wanna say pests, but other inhabitants. So because of this, usually you will never notice anything in your aquarium unless there's some sort of imbalance with everything that's going on. These worms will never make themselves known. In my case, in the beginning, I really had no idea why they were even here, why I saw so many of them. But once I started to do a little bit more research and started to try and clean them out, I quickly realized what I was doing wrong. So when these aquarium worms make themselves known, it is one or two of a few different reasons. There could be an imbalance in your water quality or your water parameters, meaning that there's improper levels of ammonia or nitrites or nitrates. There could be chemicals in your water that are throwing things off. There could be an imbalance of temperature, and oxygen level, just all sorts of things based around your water parameters that could cause them to have a spike, make themselves known, and try and figure out for themselves how to live a better life because they're trying to live in your aquarium whether you like it or not. I definitely don't love it. I wish they would find their own house, but they can't. They live in my aquarium, so they're just trying to figure out how to better live their lives as well. So as an extension of that first point, there is low oxygen levels. And with that, when they make themselves known because of low oxygen, it is because where they live, which is down in the substrate, if they lose a little bit of oxygen there, they will come up and try and get to the surface or more water movement to get oxygen. Another reason that these worms make themselves known is that there's too much waste. Now again, this doesn't mean that you're disgusting and you're not doing your job. It just means that maybe your bio load is a little too much, which means that you need to bump up some of your filtration or just with water changes and everything, maybe you're missing a little bit. It's just kind of all in all together where there's a little bit too much waste and debris that's basically feeding these worms. So that's why it's important to really stay on top of your water changes. I do mine weekly, but there have been occasions, which is why I said I kind of know what went on. There have been occasions where I've skipped, you know, to about 10 days versus every seven days. And it's not a huge deal. My tanks have really great filtration, but every now and then towards the bottom, just like with this aquarium and my substrate, things get stuck. I miss a few pieces, la-di-da. Now there are a few other reasons why these worms make themselves known, but one of the most common and the last one that I will be discussing is that you are overfeeding. So when it comes to feeding your animals, if a lot of that food ends up making it to the bottom of the aquarium, then that's where the worms are gonna come around and try and eat that. They're helping you out by eating some of the food that's left over in your aquarium, but in return, they're multiplying and reproducing and causing a real big spike of these kind of worms in your aquarium. If you're feeding too often, if you're feeding too much, then you're also feeding all these worms that are living in your tank. With my feeding the snails, I like to feed them snail jello that I make myself and it is so easy to just toss a chunk of it in the aquarium, leave it there and let them finish it off as they finish it off. This is how I knew that I was doing things wrong because I wasn't actually removing any uneaten food after a day or two. I was leaving it there and letting them eat it as it was there. Now. Say what you will about me, okay? I know, I already know that I did that wrong. <laughs> and this is probably where my issue arose. So I'm not 100% sure exactly how many worms I ended up with in my aquarium, but I do know that one complete gut of everything 
was not going to be enough. I had to do this several times to eradicate these worms as best as I could. I also changed up the feeding schedules of my animals and I'll talk about that later in the video. And that's definitely been helping to keep the population down. So yes, worms in my aquarium freaking out a little bit, but I have jumped into action to take care of the problem and I recorded everything for you guys and I have updates. So if you wanna know how I took care of my detritus worm issue in my aquarium, then keep watching. Okay, so this is the setup that I have going on right now. This is extremely temporary just until things get sorted out and these things freaking leave my aquarium. I decided to take out the big plant that I had in here as well as two of the moss balls. I did keep two in here. One of them is brand new and I decided to keep the rock in here as well, but I did boil it first. And these two little plants were just something I had lying around. So I thought I'd just stick them in there just to make it look a little bit more appealing while this is temporarily my setup. I don't love it. I think it looks ugly, but it is what it is. So now that you guys see what my setup is gonna look like for a little while, I'm gonna put the snails back and hopefully everything is gonna be okay. All right, so I've put the snails back in here. They are currently congregated there in the back, as you can see. They're gonna come out here in a little bit. I am slightly worried about them. Whenever I took them out of their cups to put them back in the tank, I did give them a little bit of a wash, like a snail bath, just to try and see if I could get any worms off of them, if they had any. I don't notice anything coming out of them internally. So that's why I think that these are just the type that just live in the aquarium instead of being actual parasites. I don't know the best solution for this just yet. This is just my first time doing this. And if there's any changes, then I will update you. But as for now, here's what I have set up and the snails are in there and I'm gonna give them a couple days before feeding them and then we'll see what happens next. This is exactly 12 days after my last update and there's been a bit of a problem. So remember how I said that I would need to gut this aquarium uh, more than once? Well, I sure did. And I had a bare bottom in here for uh, 10 days and everything seemed to be fine. I could not see any more of these creatures on the glass or anywhere else. I slowed down on my feeding and everything. Everything seemed to be working well again. So I made the decision to put the sand back in there and have everything set up looking, you know, somewhat more cute, you know, because I don't know, appearances. But that wasn't the best idea because I did this two days ago, two days ago. And I already have quite a lot of these things on my glass again. And I also, discovered that Cozy has some in his aquarium, so I have also had to gut his aquarium. I don't know what to do. But really quickly, the snails are doing fantastic. Uh, they don't seem to mind that anything is in their aquarium, which I don't know why they would anyways, but yeah, they're doing fantastic. It's just, um, figuring out what the heck these worms are and how to get rid of them. Fun times. Okay, so today is day 13 since my initial gut of this tank and as you can see I've gutted it again because I don't know what else to do. 
So this time, as boring as it is, um, I'm going to leave them alone in this tank with no plants, no rocks, no substrate, nothing but their water, and them. And that's what I'm going to do for a little bit. Um, it's not enriching for them whatsoever. It makes me feel really bad, but I can't think of anything else to really do at this point um, until these things go away. So this is where I'm at, and I'll give you an update as I have one. Okay, so this is going to be my final update because it's been quite a while since we started this whole project. And I wanted to let you guys know that things are so much better. These worms are not entirely gone, but the situation is that they're very, very limited in quantities now. When I first started this, I was seeing hundreds upon hundreds of them. I'm only counting like three to five. And that, like I said, is really not a huge deal. If you have a couple of them in there, it's not going to hinder anything in your aquarium. So seeing a few versus hundreds is really not anything to worry about. So what I ended up doing, as you can see, is I removed all the moss balls so that there's no more living plant in here for now. I plan on replacing those later, but it's really not a big deal to not have them in there right now. I completely changed the substrate to a fine sand by Carob Sea, which I love. I replaced the plant that I had originally put in here with a brand new one. I kept my rock in there after I bleached it. I also added an air stone just to keep the water moving and add a little bit more oxygen in there so that these worms don't start to fight for oxygen with my creatures. And then over here in the corner, I have this little glass dish that's shaped like a leaf so that I can put their food and their calcium on there because this sand is so fine that sometimes the food will just become covered in the sand and this way they can actually eat it without ingesting a bunch of sand at the same time. They can get the sand out of their bodies, but I just find it easier to not make such a mess if I have this little dish in here. And they use it well. It doesn't cause any problems. So yes, I'm extremely happy with the progress that this aquarium has made. I did not end up completely eradicating it of these worms, but like I said, a few is not a big deal, so I'm just keeping an eye on it and keeping things as clean as I can and feeding a little bit differently as well. Whereas I used to feed every single day, I now feed every two days, and that has helped a whole lot. For an update on the snails themselves, you can see just how big they've gotten and how beautiful they are. They are basically tripled in size, and it's so crazy to me, but they are doing really well. And now it's meal time for everyone. They have smelled their food, so they are coming in to grab it. Blue's going to end up bulldozing both of those guys right off. So once again, here we have our updated snail aquarium. Looking great. Everything's going well. And I don't have a worry in the world for the future. And I did want to give a quick update on Cozy's aquarium because I did find worms in there with him. And the same thing, I removed the moss balls, changed the substrate to the fine sand, and now everything in his tank is also perfectly fine. I still find a couple in his, but I've only counted two so far. So he definitely has a lot less in his aquarium than the other guys do, and that's all right with me. Again, I can live with them, and I'm also feeding him every two days instead of every day as well. So I think that's definitely helping. So that's it. That's all the updates I have on these aquariums. This is the current status, and hopefully it stays this way. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that I helped you guys learn a little bit on this situation. Definitely not ideal, definitely not desirable, but it happened, I dealt with it. It may not be the last time that I deal with it and that's fine because that's just the joys of fish keeping. It's so enjoyable to have an aquarium. It looks beautiful, it makes you happy, the animals are thriving. But at the same time, you are gonna come about some issues and some drama. That's just part of it. And that's part of any day in life. So you just take it for what it is and deal with it as you can. What I want you guys to take away from this, again, is that this happens all the time. You are not gonna talk to any fish keeper and hear that they've never had any kind of issue, especially with other living organisms whether that is worms or little crustaceans or bacteria of some sort. I know that this kind of situation is not going to make you look fantastic. You know, other people 
outsiders might be like, well, why do you have this in your aquarium? I don't have it in mine. Honey, I guarantee you probably do, or at least you will in the future. It's not gonna happen to every single person in terms of them seeing what's going on, but as I said, I guarantee you there are some sort of microorganisms living in everybody's aquarium. It's just part of life. It's just like with anything living outside, you know, you may look at a pile of dirt and see nothing, but there's definitely some sort of cleanup crew inside that dirt that's eating things like waste and dead matter and, you know, whatever else that they like to eat. So the same thing happens in water. You may not see it with your naked eye, but they are definitely there helping you clean up some stuff and they make themselves known and they way overpopulate when there's some sort of imbalance somewhere. So just as long as you kind of do a trial and error situation and figure out what exactly is going on, then you can definitely help the problem. In this kind of situation, it's basically impossible to fully eradicate the worms, but living with a handful versus living with thousands is a whole lot better. I'm sorry that I don't have any information on any other kind of aquatic worms, maybe in the future, I don't wanna deal with it, but maybe in the future something will come up where I have to do something a little bit more drastic. I don't want planaria in my aquariums, but if I do, I will let you guys know, I will film that process and figure out what's needing to be done for that. But for now, I have detritus worms and here's how I figured it out. And that is about all that I have for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button on your way out. Also hit that notification bell so you can see when I upload next and I will see you in my next video. Bye.